Hey everyone, it's Allie and welcome to my channel. Today I am back with another weekly haul and if you are new to my channel or just haven't seen my last few videos, I am going to be doing weekly hauls every Wednesday. I have just figured out <laughs> that the things that sell best for me are the things that I pick out for myself and I've recently discovered a wonderful thrift store pretty close to my house that does have different discounts on different days and so I go on a specific day when many things are marked down to a dollar. I do pick up things that are more than a dollar on that day as well, but my cost of goods has been pretty low lately, so I love that. That's definitely going to be, like I said, my priority when it comes to getting inventory from now on. And if you love my thread up unboxings, don't worry, I'm still gonna be doing them just a little bit less often, and I probably will be doing the smaller boxes rather than like, getting 200 pounds of inventory. Also, if you saw my last video, I did a come thrift with me at another local thrift store in the area. I just kind of wanted to see if I was missing out on anything there. Spoiler, not really, but I did get 10 items from there, so that will not be included in this haul, and if you want to see that, make sure to go watch my last video. So everything in this haul I did get from that local discount store. I got 45 items and I ended up spending $72.56, which works out to be just $1.60 per item. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is not the most amazing haul ever. Not every week can be my best haul ever. This haul is full of lots of bread and butter items that I expect to sell for between honestly like $15 and $35. For me, my kind of method with reselling is to keep my cost of goods quite low and I'm okay with making some of those smaller flips. I know other people, they only look out for high-end items, they might pay up for them and they might sell things for over $100. I'm really okay with the lower dollar amount sales it adds up to still give me a pretty good net profit at the end of the month and I don't have to worry about losing a lot of money. So yeah, just wanted to put that out there. I know everyone has a different strategy, but that just kind of is mine and it's worked pretty well for me so far. There are definitely some downfalls, like having a lot of inventory in my house, but that's okay. All right, so I organized this a little bit better this week. I'm going to try to do it this way. Let me know if you don't like it, but I organized by you know different categories of clothing. So you'll see like all the bottoms, all the dresses, whatever in a row. And normally I will start out with like shoes and accessories, except this week I didn't get any. All right, so first off, I will start with my one guy's item. And I really do like this item. I did pay more than a dollar for it, but I think it's definitely worth it. It is a New York Giants pullover. It's a size extra large. It's in great shape. This might be vintage. I'm not quite sure, so I didn't say that in the listing, but it is an NFL authentic pullover, but the back is really the cool part, I think. It has the NY for New York, and I definitely think I should get at least $35 for this, especially because it is a wonderful, wonderful size. XL is my personal favorite size to sell for both men and women. It's kind of like the average in the US, so it does the best, makes sense. I also did pick up one kid's item as well. I did recently start like a second Poshmark. It's just under my husband's name. That's kind of how you can get away with that, I guess. And I haven't really done too much with it lately, so I need to get on that. But I did get one item. I picked this up for a dollar. Just a really cute Abercrombie crew neck. I do really like to pick up Abercrombie, and this is a size 15, 16. But this totally also could be like a women's small or even medium, honestly. And then I did pick up one pajama item. Pajamas actually do really well for me. And if you saw my last video, my come thrift with me, I actually picked up two different like intimate sleepwear items because they sell really fast for me and I just like don't really have any in my inventory. So I have this one from Victoria's Secret as well. This was actually in their dresses, but definitely, you know, just like a night shirt. And it's a size extra large, wonderful. It says Angel, you know, pretty basic, good condition and I do have quite a bit of interest on this already, so expecting it to move pretty fast. Okay, now I guess we will just dive right into the tops. Like, 
that is the majority of what I have. And honestly, you guys, because of the way that I am sourcing now, I have kind of found what it seems like other resellers have known about for a while in the Columbus area, which is this dollar day. And so my cost of goods ends up being like the same as when I go to the bins. And this is a much more enjoyable experience, I would say. And so because so many other resellers go to this dollar day, it's kind of like whatever section you go to first is going to be the majority of the items that you have. I do try to check out like most of the different areas. I pretty much shop until I really have to go to the bathroom because they do not have a good bathroom situation and I'm always by myself. So yeah, each week there will be kind of a theme and I can already tell you spoiler for next week, I focused more on shorts. So this one has a lot of tops. Next week we'll have more bottoms, but it's just gonna be kind of different every week. Basically wherever I go to first will be the majority. All right, so first of all, just a super bread and butter. I don't expect to sell this for much at all, but I thought that this was really cute. And this is a Hollister size small, like smocked floral crop top. Thankfully I was able to find a really cute stock photo. This would have been very hard to make look good on a hanger, I really need to get a mannequin. That's next on my list of things to get to better my reselling business. But yeah, I don't expect to sell that for much. And some of the things like that too, I know Play-Dohs will buy, so I'm not too concerned. Okay, here is a cute little pullover, like turtleneck thing from J. Crew. It is very pink, so great for spring. Turtleneck, but you can unbutton it. Actually, one of the stock photos that I found the girl had it like unbuttoned halfway and it looked really pretty on her at least. But really it just feels like a sweatshirt so that is always wonderful. I love to pick up J. Crew actually. And a lot of these things like I wouldn't pay four or five dollars for but because I'm getting them for less than two dollars I'm happy to pick them up. Okay another Abercrombie and Fitch. This is like a slightly cropped, like it would hit you kind of right at your jeans if you were wearing high-waisted jeans for most people, I think. But I do well with camo. I really like camo. Just kind of like a thinner long sleeve shirt. And this is a size small. I said it in the last one, I think, but in my opinion, I think Abercrombie & Fitch is kind of the highest quality or at least equal with American Eagle as far as like the trendy mall brands go. Okay, this is a John Galt crop top. John Galt is sold at Brandy Melville as well as PacSun, it looked like when I was looking this up. But kind of like that Hollister top, thankfully, I was able to find a really cute model photo. And John Galt, Brandy Melville, they're kind of one size fits all. I usually just list things as small because I just have found an experience that people don't really search one size most of the time. They like have their actual size in there. So things sell a lot better if you just pick a size if it is one size. and. Brandy Melville, one size fits all, definitely more like one size fits small. But this is a really, really cute top. And if you're curious, that is what the John Galt label looks like. So yeah, in my experience, the reason I really don't mind picking up kind of less substantial pieces like this is that they don't sit for long in my closet. So I might flip this for 15 to $18, but things like that usually sell within a few weeks and I've made a quick 10 to $15 when my cost of goods is this low. Okay, a little Abercrombie and Fitch sweater. This is just such a wardrobe staple. It is a size extra small, so not ideal, but the reason that I really wanted to get this is because it is new with tags and this retailed for $59. So kind of insane, but yeah, I do think Abercrombie is pretty good quality. Definitely as good a quality as a lot of other brands. Okay, this is one of my favorite types of pieces to pick up from J. Crew. They have a lot of these like nice looking crew necks, I would say, with really fun graphics on them. So I do really like this one a lot. It says Heart's Delight. It is a size small and it is from the newer J. Crew tag. So it has more of like that cursive script. So even though I will pick up older J. Crew as well, if it's a good kind of like timeless style, I do definitely always like to see that newer label. And I've sold things like this before for around that $35 mark. So really adds up all these different sales, they will add up. I did pick up quite a bit of sweaters you'll see, but like I said, I went to the tops first and if I see like good quality sweaters, good materials, good condition, whatever, I can't leave them behind if they're gonna go to the landfill next. 
So, you know, worst case scenario, I hold on to these for a while. I relist them in the fall and winter. I'm not too concerned about that. And a lot of these are like spring colors or like very neutral. All right, so here we have a very cute little Banana Republic 100% merino wool thin sweater. So this I think would be wonderful to wear all spring long. I could see this with like a really pretty patterned skirt. That would be absolutely adorable or even just like jeans and sneakers. And this is quite plain, you know, it's just a singular color, but I do really like that color. And it does have like a scalloped collar, so that's something. And I looked for so long and there are no holes as far as I can tell. Of course, now I'll probably find one. But no, I think that this is really in perfect condition. I'm never gonna turn down anything that is 100% merino wool, cashmere, anything like that, silk. I love to pick it up. This one I got for a few reasons. I do like selling this brand, J. Jill, when it is in bigger sizes. And this is a size extra large, which as I said earlier, is my favorite size to sell. It's my most consistent selling size, I would say. This is also 100% cotton. It is a nice v-neck, looks great with like leggings. There's a nice stock photo. So even though this is also just a plain color, I think that there are a lot of things going for it. And I do have some interest on this already as well. I'm also gonna drag out selling sweaters as long as possible because you can just get more for sweaters, coats, jackets, things like that than you can for a tank top. So yeah, I'm just trying to like milk the sweaters as long as I can. Here's another J. Crew sweater. This one's an extra, extra small, but I do really like this sweater in general. Very pretty color. And I believe this one was 100% wool as well. Yep, 100% wool in great shape. And it still has this little tag in here that says like remove before washing or wearing. So it might be new without tags. I don't really think so, but yeah, it does look really, really good. Oh, I kind of forgot about this top. <laughs> it's been a few days since I got all this stuff, but this is from Loft. Very, very pretty, like gray and white floral top. It feels kind of like terry cloth material. And this is one I am probably gonna borrow for myself. I did list it, but I think I am gonna wear it a couple times before it sells, as long as I can keep it clean. Maybe I'll just like wear it for a video or whatever. But I did pick this up with me in mind, but yeah, we'll see what happens. But I thought that this was so, so cute. And yeah, like a lot of these sweaters I got for a dollar. This is one I genuinely don't really remember picking up, but I'm not too mad about it. Sometimes it just becomes a blur because you're just trying to like get good stuff before all the other resellers. There's this one man in particular, he like flies through the racks. He is so fast and he's probably about five foot tall and he smells amazing. This man's probably like 60 years old. He smells really, really good. <laughs> so I don't mind standing next to him in the racks, but like he moves so fast and a lot of them do. So if I want to get like anything, I got to try to pick it up too. I'm trying to be better about like editing my cart before I pay for everything, but you know, sometimes stuff gets buried. But anyway, all that to say, this piece is a Uniqlo and Disney collab. And it's just a cute little pink three quarter sleeves, has a image of mini. I sold something really, really fast from last week's haul that was also a Disney mini piece. That was a much more substantial sweater than this, but yeah, we'll see how this does. Uniqlo is just kind of like a mall brand company that doesn't really retail for a lot, but it does actually hold a lot of its value. And I always get a lot of interest on my Uniqlo pieces and Disney in general. I always get a lot of interest on those. So I did figure, I guess, when I was picking it up that those two combined, I would sell it pretty quickly. Okay, here was one I did pay more than a dollar for. I probably paid like $8 or so for it but it is, you know, a pretty thick free people sweater. I think this is called like the Karina sweater. It's just a nice wrap. People look really cute when they wear like little bralettes with it. And this is a size medium, which in free people talk is more like at least a large or extra large. Their stuff is so oversized. I might not have picked this up if it was like a size extra small, but it's in good shape. I'm hoping to sell this for around 40 to $45. We'll see, free people can be hard to know exactly what you can get for it. It can sit for a while depending on the piece, but I do still like to pick it up. Out of those kinds of brands, Anthro is definitely the one I have become most picky with, 
but I still really do like to sell Madewell and I still do like to pick up free people if I can get it for a good price. This one I got with my mom in mind actually. It's just an old navy long line cardigan, but it's really nice I think for this spring season, especially for us here in Ohio where it will be some level of cold until probably May. But I think it's a really nice kind of off-white color. There's like some subtle gray in there as well. And if she bought this new at Old Navy, it'd probably be like $40. I don't know, they always have stuff on sale. But Old Navy doesn't, of course, sell super, super great. But yeah, if I can get some stuff for my family while I'm out, I'm happy to do it. And if she doesn't want it, I'll probably sell it for 20 bucks and it's fine. <laughs> okay, this one too, thank goodness I was able to find a stock photo. This is Brandy Melville and I'm not gonna be able to show you. I'll just put a picture of the stock photo up, but it wraps and you can either like tie it in the front or you could like tie it around your back and wear it that way. So it has these long like string things. You can just wear this so many different ways. Again, one size, I just list it as small. Okay, this is one I did get for myself. I've already worn it a few times. I probably will end up listing it eventually, but it's this very, very cozy, a new day from Target mock neck sweater. It's nice and long line, so it covers your butt. I love that. I love to wear a lot of crew necks. You guys always see me wear in lounge wear, but if you can get like a nice sweater that basically feels like loungewear, that's absolutely ideal. So I will keep this for myself for now, but probably by fall, I will list it. That's one of the best things about reselling is the fact that many times I will pick up something for myself and even if I love it, you know, I might get tired of it or whatever, I just want something different. So I will go through my closet all the time and just pull out things and sell them and then replenish them. And I actually have like a spring haul for myself coming up in the next couple weeks and I will show you kind of things that I've been picking up over the last several months to have in my own wardrobe. All right, last week I said I'll probably always have a little bit of an oopsie, <laughs> like just something that I regret getting or maybe I missed a big flaw or something like that. And unfortunately, I did manifest the fact that <laughs> that would happen this week. But I'm not too mad. I'm still gonna list this. I haven't listed it yet. But this is from Torrid. It's a size two, which I believe translates like exactly to a 2X. They do the vanity sizing. But you know, this could fit a lot of different sizes because it is just a little lacy cardigan. Great, I think, for spring. Throw it on over a dress throw it on over a t-shirt, whatever. But I did inspect this, but obviously like I inspected it pretty quickly and I missed the flaw because this is so open anyway, but there is a little bit of a hole there. It's nothing too bad and it's like right at the back of your neck. So most people would probably have hair <laughs> that would cover that up. So I'm still gonna list it, but I will discount it a little bit because I missed that flaw. Let's hope there's no more that I missed, honestly, but I think we're good. Okay, here is a cute little made well, I believe linen blend top. Oh, they actually cut out the interior tag, but I found another listing that had the tag and I'm pretty positive that this is a linen and cotton blend. I did already list this one, but it's a size medium, so that's wonderful. I might borrow this at some point, but I just really liked it. Like I said, I do still enjoy selling Madewell. It does pretty well for me. If you're curious, by chance, this is slightly sheer. So this would look really nice with, I think, just like a white bralette, or you could wear a tank under it, or whatever, but I think I probably paid like $4 for that. I don't think that one was a dollar. Okay, just a great, classic sweater. Everybody needs one of these in their life. This is from Gap. It is a size medium. And this is a nylon, acrylic, and wool blend. So that's great. Love to see at least a few good materials in there. But I love the pattern on this. And I do have interest on this already. So I do expect to sell this for around $20 to $25. I did get one anthro piece. This is actually like the Anthro main brand by Anthropology. The main reason I got this is because I love animal print. I love to wear it, I love to sell it. And this is a size large. And it's a short sleeve top, but it is the length that like comes to your elbows, which I think a lot of people really like. A lot of people are kind of self-conscious of their arms, I think. And they like to wear short sleeve shirts that just kind of have a little bit more coverage. And this is one I think that would be 
so, so cute to be worn a bazillion ways. Like you could wear this with like a black leather skirt or leather pants or something like that, or you could wear it under overalls and layer it with like a denim jacket. Like I see so many things for this. I might have to borrow it, we'll see. Uh, this is one of my favorite finds, even though it is kind of plain, I guess. It is a very, very nice and thick Banana Republic sweater. I love like how thick that collar is. It has that handmade look. I absolutely love it. You can use terms like fisherman sweater. A lot of people will search for things like that, make you feel like you're up in New England in February in a lighthouse or something. I just really love the look of sweaters like this. It's kind of like an elevated version of the Gap sweater, to be honest. And yeah, this one is 64% merino extra fine wool and then some nylon in there as well. So great, great materials. I will probably hold out for at least 30 to 35 for this sweater. If I get an offer for 30 this time of year, I will definitely take it. Okay, almost done with the tops, guys. Here we have a logo by Lori Goldstein top. I do have quite a bit of interest on this one already as well. It seems like a lot of the tops in this brand like look very, very similar. Cause at first I thought I actually had this exact same <laughs> top in my inventory already, but it is just the slightest bit different. But this one is a size large, so that's fantastic. I know a lot of people who have more experience with this brand than me say to focus on the bigger sizes, so I will just pass that on as well. It seems like large and up with Lori Goldstein does better than like extra small, small. But I would say that's true for pretty much every brand as well. All right, I did get an Eileen Fisher. This is a size small, and this is definitely a brand too that tends to do better with bigger sizes, but this one is pretty oversized and I mean, the most Easter sweater you could ever see in your life. So, so pretty. It is in excellent condition. I have found maybe like three or four Eileen Fisher pieces, but they always seem to be flawed. So I haven't had the greatest luck with this brand yet, but like I said, most of the stuff I found from this brand is flawed, but I've picked it up anyway. And so since this one isn't, and it is good for the season, I'm hoping it will move a little faster. And this is also a linen and cotton blend, so fantastic there. Yeah, that I was not gonna leave behind. Okay, here is another Banana Republic sweater. I don't know the exact breakdown of materials on this one because the interior tag was cut out, but this is Banana Republic with fine Italian yarn by Philp Ucci, F-I-L-P-U-C-C-I, -C -C -I, and it's a size small. And kind of like that one that I showed earlier, I think although it is plain, it is just a really nice spring color, and because it is good materials, it should still move for a pretty good amount. And that's why like, I love Poshmark too, because pretty much anything you want, you can find cheaper on there. So I would always recommend looking on Poshmark before you buy something brand new. Okay, one more top and then we will move on to dresses, I think. This one is a skies are blue top. Really cute button down with like a cuffed cap sleeve type thing. This is a size small and this feels so, so, so comfortable. And this brand actually does do decently well. It's kind of like a boutique type brand, but I think this brand is sold through Stitch Fix. So if you guys know, like Stitch Fix is not cheap, it's kind of expensive. So it seems like some people, they might get a few boxes, they get used to the brands, and then they go seek out those brands on platforms like Poshmark. So I do tend to get a good bit of interest on these types of brands. So we'll see how this does, but this one is so, so soft. My mom might wanna take that one as well. Okay, I did just get a few dresses this week. It definitely had been swept pretty clean by the time I got there. So most of these are smaller sizes, so that's kind of a bummer, but I'm still happy with them. So this one is from BDG, which is an Urban Outfitters brand. I have had very good luck selling specifically BDG items in the past for right around, you know, like that 25 to $35 mark, depending on the type of item. But I thought this was so, so adorable. It is a bummer that this one is an extra small, but I think it is very, very cute. It has that kind of denim look, but it is very, very stretchy. Somebody with a great figure <laughs> would look wonderful in this. And I love these kind of dresses too, because they would be adorable with either like a sweater layered over top of it, or you could put just some sneakers with this, 
very very cute and extremely comfortable okay this one i guess i still have to list this is how i know if i've listed something or not because i cut off the tag at the last second but this is an adorable little airy dress i love the detail on this one the sleeves the little tassel very adorable. This one is an extra small as well. This one probably could fit a small though. It does feel a little bit bigger than just an extra small, I'd say. But I do do well with Aerie as well. Okay, I guess I haven't listed a lot of these dresses. This one is Abercrombie and Fitch. It is a size small. This would be actually so cute to wear to like your bridal shower or something like that. This actually is a pretty high quality piece I think and thankfully it still does have like the little ties you tie in the back it's in great shape this probably was worn like one time or whatever this would also be really cute for like a uh, high school graduation something like that so yeah I gotta get this listed but I do like it and my last dress is from Lulu's it's pretty plain but it's a size large and this too like I was saying for the other ones if you had an event where you needed a black dress this is a great option would be a great one to wear to work and although it is just kind of black it has some like textured detail on the side here it is a little bit more of a bodycon fit and it is just in great shape and because it is a size large too that was another reason i wanted to pick it up all right on to bottoms i'm trying to not get as many jeans and actually in next week's haul there will be no jeans so i'm getting a little bit better because I have a lot in my closet right now, but I do like to sell bottoms a lot. So this one was definitely an experiment and I'm glad I picked it up because it kind of did prove my <laughs> hypothesis. So this is from Ann Denim, which is just H&M. And I think it was just in my last week's haul that I picked up another pair of Ann Denim jeans from this thrift store because they were only a dollar and they were distressed and they were button fly and they got a lot of interest very quickly and they sold super fast i think they sold in a day and so when i saw these also for a dollar i decided to see if there is just randomly a lot of hype around h m's jean brand or if it was just because those other ones were distressed and button fly and it definitely was because of the style of those jeans because these are just you know pretty standard high rise skinny jean and there is no interest on them after about probably four days of being listed, I think these ones have been. So yeah, definitely don't run to pick up H&M denim. But these are a size 26. And those other ones were a smaller size too, so definitely the style. And talking about style, I am giving Seven For All Mankind another shot. I haven't picked them up for a while because a lot of people have said they haven't really been doing that well. If you do want to be on the lookout for them, it seems that the dojo style does sell the best. So just so you know, but I did get these because they are a flare. I was able to get them for a dollar and it seems like the flare is coming back in style a little bit, like any kind of wider leg seemed to be coming back. And these do have a little bit of distressing as well. And yeah, I definitely would not have paid like $6 for these, but for a dollar for sure. Some Lily Pulitzer Bermuda style shorts. These are specifically called the chipper short and these are a size four. I think this pattern is called C soiree or something like that. And Lily Pulitzer definitely, definitely has a following anytime I've picked it up. It has done very well. I've never picked up this style of short from them before, but I definitely think as warmer weather is approaching, I should be able to sell that for quite a nice profit. Okay, and some shorts. These are Hollister. They are the high rise short short with some stretch. They are just a little size 26. That is kind of the bad thing about this store is that I find way more things in smaller sizes than bigger ones, but that's just how it is sometimes. These ones are another Hollister. They are some distressed jeans. They are a size 24 and they are the low rise crop, super skinny. And I actually do have interest on these already. I'm kind of experimenting to see if the Gen Zers are liking the low rise. <laughs> Seems insane to me as a millennial. Just a wonderful classic pair of jeans. These are Gap 1969. They are a size four, just a pair of straight leg jeans. And this is like the most perfectly worn in pair of jeans. They feel 
amazing, amazing, amazing. I'll probably sell these for around $25 or my mom might want them, we'll see. Okay, a couple more pairs. This is a Shein pair of shorts, which Shein can sell as good as some brands like American Eagle sometimes, depending. They definitely can resell for pretty much exactly what they retail for, if not even more, because you can get stuff super, super cheap on Shein's website and they're always having sales. But the reason I got these is just because they are very, very trendy looking as most of Shein's stuff is. They are zebra print, animal print, They've got like the raw distressed hen. They are super high rise. Yeah, they just have a lot of stuff going for them. And these are a size small, which <laughs> what does that even mean in Shein world? Probably like a size four, I would say. Another pair of small jean shorts. These are a size 24, double zero, but they are distressed. They are a pretty good brand in Abercrombie and Fitch. They have the raw hem and they do also have the button fly. So a lot of things going for these shorts. All right, last category, we have jackets over here. So I am tentatively still picking up jackets. I probably will stop in the next couple of weeks. One of these is actually more like a hoodie, which I will pick up hoodies forever. But yeah, this week and next week will probably be a little bit of my last hurrah for jackets for the season. Here we have a Vineyard Vines pullover. I think this is called like the Shep pullover and it has this really cute anchor print on the back, like onto the shoulders. I think I ended up paying about $5 for this. I got it for half off, not for a dollar, but I was definitely willing to pay that. It is in great shape other than the fact that <laughs> the tag is cut out, but it measures like a size medium. So I listed it that way. Very, very cute. Vineyard Vines doesn't resell for a lot in my experience, but it does tend to move pretty quickly. Okay, this is one I haven't listed yet and it is Gap size medium. And the reason I got this was mostly just because it was quite cheap and I thought it was great for spring. Just like a longer coat would be really cute to wear open over just like a basic outfit. So we'll see how this does. I do think this is probably pretty old. <laughs> like I don't think this is a very recent gap piece by any means, but it really is quite substantial. So we'll see how it does. I'd be really happy to get $25 for this. Okay, this is one of the more exciting pieces from this haul. This is Alfred Dunner and it is <laughs> this really, really pretty kind of like carpet bag looking blazer coat. It is pretty thick, I think, for just a standard blazer, but it has three buttons on it and the buttons have some nice detail. It's in great shape. It's a size 10. I don't think this is like super vintage Alfred Dunner by any means, but still has that look. Okay, a couple more pieces. I was happy to get this, even though I'm guessing I'll probably just have to end up relisting it in the fall. I do think it was worth it. This is a Talbot's 100% wool coat and it has like the little necktie there. Very, very pretty. This would just make you look so classy, I think, wearing it. This is a size 10 as well. It's in great shape, probably wasn't really worn much at all. Yeah, I definitely was not gonna leave it just because it's not the season for it anymore. And the last thing is a Target piece, but I have very good luck with pieces like this. This is Wild Fable, it's a size large, doesn't really feel like it was ever worn, zip up, like fuzzy Sherpa style hoodie. And this I think could definitely last you well into spring. All right guys, so that was everything I picked up for this week's haul. I know there was nothing like super amazing in it, but that's just how it goes a lot of the time. Not every week is gonna be like finding all these bucket list brands and things like that. But hopefully you can see that you can definitely find some good quality, very cute, attainable brands. So I think you just have to think in your head, like what are all the sellability factors for this piece? And if it has a few, and if you can get it for a low price, it can definitely be worth it to pick up items like that. And I know a lot of people source these types of things and then they take them right over to Plato's Closet. So that's always an option as well if you don't think maybe like a 10 or $15 net profit is worth it for you to list. So just a reminder, there are so many ways to run your business if you are a fellow reseller and try not to compare yourself to others. That's something that I'm always constantly reminding myself as well. But if you did like the video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help my channel out a lot. I am posting every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and every Wednesday will be a weekly call just like this. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.